Cheerio Bix Louise, the big head bookworm. Lovely to see you. Hope you're well. Hope you're having a good day, wherever it is you are and whatever it is you're doing. Hello. It is Friday the 1st of March, and so that must mean it's Friday Reads. It's Friday Reads. It's Friday Reads. I'm back in my bedroom. It's Friday Reads. Yes, it's Friday Reads and the holiday's over. So I went on holiday with the husband and our 10-year-old son, Benedict, to the southwest of England I went to we went to our happy place we went to Cornwall and we had a glorious week oh me oh my did we have good weather we've had a unseasonably warm weather and it managed to coincide with the half term well the half term that we have so it was Benedict's half term holiday and so we went down there and we spent a glorious week down there so I filmed an abbreviated Friday Reads last week, which you may have seen, and it was Friday Reads on holiday. And here we are, back, back. I have a coffee to keep me going, although today is a good day. To share happy news with you, today, Friday the 1st of March, we find out, we found out this morning that Benedict got into the secondary school that he wanted to get into. Yay! Cue that noise. Yes! Happy days, happy days. There is a, there was very little doubt that he would get in. Let's be honest, very little doubt. Um, he applied, we put it first place in our kind of order of schools that we wanted to go to. And we're in the catchment area and it's a very big school. So it's unlikely that it's going to be oversubscribed. So, I mean, we were, we were kind of odds on that he was going to get in, but there was just that little bit of doubt. And he had that little bit of doubt because he really wants to go there. Um, partly because of the courses that they offer there, partly because it is the closest one. And so he can cycle to school and that would be huge for him. Um, having his own independence that he can get to school on his uh, under his own steam. Because um, that's what he does at the moment. And he really likes that. It really is important to him. And uh, thirdly, because that's where his friends are going. And he's 10 and he's got like this group of chums and they all go to the park. And I think it would be really hard for him this summer if they were all going and he wasn't going. So he was so pleased and we were worried that he wasn't going to find out before. So so in this area, they have prim you have primary school, which is when they go up to the age of 11. And that's year six and it's until they are the year that they're 11 and then in the September they go on to their secondary school and their secondary school is up to year uh, is up to age 16 when they do their GCSEs that's our exam system here at the moment and then they can stay on and do further carry on further into education up to 18 and then you can go on and do more and what have you but uh, let's concentrate on one thing at one time he's got into the secondary school of his choice he's rode off to school happy as everything able to go and say to his chums i'm in i'm in so happy day happy day so yes pinch punch first day of the month bags in no returns I have to say that to you um had a lovely week. I did lots, did bits of reading. So I have reading to show you. I am going to show you the reading that we did, that I did last week, as well as I did holiday week, as well as this week just gone. Because there. But first of all, let me catch you up on some laundry news. Yes, this isn't going to be every week. Don't worry for those people that can't abide tales of the laundry line, as I might call this segment um but uh it has been a big week it's been a big big week because we had holiday washing uh but it was a glorious week so i was able to dry outside as were my neighbors and i did look every day and i amused myself one day by just well i found myself i didn't amuse myself i found myself just stood watching the neighbor put out their washing it was him not her and I was quite glad because I'd seen her putting it out and he was out there but wasn't putting it out and I was worried that he wasn't well. Um, but he came out and he was putting it out and it was just him. They'd already had a towels wash. They were onto socks and sundries. And uh, I couldn't work it out because he seemed to be... There wasn't... Where were the pegs? And then I was watching him and he seemed to be going from, from his hip and producing a peg. Or, and I was like, 
has he got a waste peg disp- dispenser? Has he got like a utility belt of pegs? Is it a laundry utility belt? If so, I want one because that's got to be the best thing ever. I was fascinated. And then I realised, now this is the shocking thing for me. And it was so shocking. I told the husband about it and he went, no. And there was, there was a little moment I was thinking, oh my God, is he saying no? As in, my God, that's astounding. Or no, I can't believe you're talking to me about laundry. But actually it was that the fact it was outstanding. It was outstanding information. Here we are. He pre-pegs. Yes, he doesn't have a basket. He just brings out clothes that he's going to put on the line and kind of balances them on the line. And he's pre-pegged. He's put the pegs already on each item. They come out of the house pegged. I know, I have never heard of such a thing. I mean, I was you know, agog at the idea of a peg utility belt, but no, he pre-pegs. So when he goes in the house, he must have a peg dispenser or some kind of utensil for pegging, but pegs, and then brings out and pre-pegs. So as he takes it down, it has its peg attached. Well, you can imagine. You can imagine the conversations myself and the husband had about this. It was, it was... It was a good a good 10 minutes of laundry we had. So, yeah, yeah. Have you ever heard of such a thing? Am I... I mean, I feel like I am watching a master at work when I watch him peg out. I mean, there was economy of motion, there was efficiency, but it was elegant. And I wonder when I peg out whether I'm not. I, You know, there was an elegance and a fluidity to his mov- movements that just... I, I honestly, I was a gog. A gog I was. As you can see, <laughs> that's how my days go, really. <laughs> I said that gave me a lift for the entire day. I, was, I kept thinking back to it, pre-pegging. And when I pegged out the next time, I thought, is that, you know, is that a good idea? You know, is the peg bag redundant nowadays? Should we pre-peg? And where, you know, am I old-fashioned that I don't think, you, you, I don't do that? Is that the kind of... The modern way, mind you, he's an older gentleman, so maybe that, I do the modern way. And he's traditional. Anyway, I just thought I'd share that. So I've got good news for Benedict and I've got laundry shenanigans going on. So yes, that's it. I've got the door open, if you can see that that black abyss. (laughs) It's not leading to the abyss. It is actually just to our stairs. But I've got a cat there. And if I close the door, the cat will go, well, I want to go out now. Um, so now the door's open, she won't want to go out. But if the door's closed, it would be immediate, well, I want to go out. Let me out. So I just thought, Sally would sit here guarding my books. She just had some breakfast. She's fine. Right, let's go talk books. Yes, let's talk books. So I uh, finished, I read and finished um, Heresy by S.J. Paris. This is the first in a series of Giordano Bruno. Tudor mysteries, thriller mysteries in Elizabethan England. True faith could be bloody murder. I did enjoy this, this battered copy that I got. Used good. No, used, but not good. Um, it's perfectly fine though. So yes, I really enjoyed this. I really got into it. I have... Prophecy, the second one, they're ready or waiting for me for whenever I feel like I'm going to leap on. I am going to carry on with the series. I thought it was very good, very enjoyable. Um, Lots of Tudor, religious intrigue and chat. So highly, highly recommend. Somebody said about C.S. Sansom. C.S. Sansom? C. Sansom? Yeah, I have got the first one in that series which is the Shard, Shard Lake, Shardrake, 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 Shardrake. Anyway, that one. Um, so I will be, I will go on to that series as well, but this is very good. I really enjoyed. Um, what else did I do? On audiobook, I finished listening to Persuasion by Jane Austen. <gasps> oh, for many, many years, Pride and Prejudice was my favourite, but I am now utterly 
persuasion. <laughs> I really am. And every time I read it, I go, yes, I am. <gasps> love it, love it, love it, love it. It uh, is one of my favourite books of all time, so that's lovely. Um, I also started reading... Oh, that's going to blow out quite badly. Here we are, we'll do that. The Sellout by Paul Beatty. Ooh, it's gone white. Here we are, so get it to adjust. There we go. Well, this lovely paperback edition that the husband bought me, the Man Booker Prize of 2016. Um, it is not my kind of thing. It is satire. And I'm sure it is amazing. And I said last week that I had started it and then given it up as a as a lost cause and quite a few people others other said yeah they struggled with it as well i'm not saying that there's anything against the book i'm just it's not my taste of book i'm just not into that kind of satire um whether or not it is that it is american satire and so i don't quite get it that could well be part of it but even english satire i don't read i don't find it enjoyable it's not my kind of thing so i'm going to give that Give that a miss. I'm going to give that... Let that go. Let that go. Um, what else did I get? This was a new book. I've actually uh, filmed a book haul, which will be coming up in the next couple of days. And this you will see on it. It is a Lab Girl, A Story of Trees, Science and Love by Hope Jaren. Um, oh, that really does blow out, doesn't it? I can't show you it because it's such a lovely cover. There we go. Have a look at that gorgeous book. Ignore me. Look at the book. Um, it's really good. It's a really, really good book. She is incredibly engaging. Uh, it is a her memoir. And there is one chapter about, uh, mini chapters about plants, about botany, about the science of it, about... Um, telling us more about trees and plants and just the, the the miraculous information that you can find out about them and how fascinating they are and and all the things and and it I mean they are just it's just amazing and then the next chapter is a longer chapter and it is a memoir it's about her but it's also her science and her love of trees and botany and learning and research and curiosity science so it's science not for gain as in financial gain I went a bit closer didn't I sorry about that hello um so it's much more about curiosity science and finding out why things do things and then maybe something could come out from it afterwards it talks about why she was drawn to it and her family and the family that she kind of found and made over the years about being isolated within the science world because she is a female scientist and so seen as an oddity so she grew up feeling like an oddity and then went into something where in the lab she feels totally at home and yet within the society of the scientists she was seen as an outsider and about getting acceptance in that and again finding her own way through that it is fascinating um she is obviously somebody that is incredibly driven um, because that is who she is. So rather being driven for results, it is just an insatiable appetite for doing and wanting and creating. And her life has to support that. And it does. She's found a, a way to make that life support that. And she is truly brilliant in talking about it in an open and engaging way that makes you want to carry on reading and makes you want to find out more about the subject and more about um more and her I want her to write more because it's just just brilliant I really loved it I loved it from the first page until the last page and I was sorry that it ended and I've got this lovely edition kind of a floppy lovely tactile paperback can I just show you <laughs> That's Paul. Um, it's lovely. It's so nice. So it's such a good book. So it is Lab Girl, A Story of Tree Science and Love by Hope Jaron. It's just great. Thoroughly, thoroughly recommend that. Um, I finished yesterday a book, again, which will be in my book haul. Excuse me. It's a quick slurp. Oh. And it is Peter May, The Man With No Face. I didn't buy this. This was the mother-in-law bought this. And um has lent it to me 
don't know whether she wants it back. She'll have to wait until next year because it's going to go into my year of books video. Um, and then I'll pass it on to somebody. Uh, this is The Man With No Face. This is not a new book. It is a crime thriller book. It is not a new book. It is a reissue. So this was written in 1981. Well, written 1980, 81. Set in 1979 in Brussels. It is looking at kind of English politics very much English politics, well, and Scottish, I suppose. Uh, British politics um, with Brussels about how we'd come into the EU and they were developing further ties with the EU. thought it would be really good and the reason it's come out, I reckon, is because of all the Brexit shenanigans that are going on, all the Brexit discussions. So it's a spy thriller and I like spy thrillers. I mean, I really like spy thrillers. Um, and I haven't read a good one in a while. So I was like, oh, lovely. Brussels, spy thriller. Um, Peter May, I have read one of his before, uh, The Firemaker. I haven't read any of his other um, books, but I have read that one and I enjoyed that one, which is a China thriller set in China, in Beijing, and I really enjoyed that. So um, I was keen to leap into this. And after reading such a good memoir, I thought, well, actually, a bit of fiction would be a good thing to do. So I picked it up and I I, I went through it. And, oh, no, 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 no. Um, not good. Didn't I didn't enjoy it. I read it, but I didn't enjoy it. I, I kind of enjoyed the first 50. I kind of was... Struggling a little bit to begin with, but it was captivating my interest enough that I could do it. I was thinking, yeah, yeah, okay. And it, the, the plot's fine. It is a spy thriller set in Brussels. That's all you need to know, really. The main man is a protagonist. The main protagonist is a reporter with no fear, jaded Edinburgh journalist Neil Bannerman. Now, that should have been a big clue to me. What book has jaded journalist on the back? I mean, no. And then um, it flits from perspective. So you have a hitman. You know he's a hitman from the first page, so that's not a surprise. So we have a hit. We have the contract killer, the hitman. We have the journalist, and we have a reporter that uh, his colleague, who's a reporter that he's staying with in Brussels, who has an autistic daughter. And so there are other people, but I just, it was Neil Bannerman, the main chap. Oh my God, it was just horrible. I mean, horrible man. The sexual politics in this book suck. And there's kind of part of me always for, is forgiving because if it is written in a time where the se sexual politics were not of this age, not of now, then you have to go, well, you know, that's they were a product of its time and 1979, not that enlightened. So I kind of went, OK, that's fine. But then when you read the beginning, you read the, the preface and he says, well, you know, I reread this when they suggested we should reprint this. I read through and I did make some amendments. And so I'm like, so you read through it and you thought, yeah, still good. And you thought, no, you didn't think, no, Neil Bannerman is a git from the beginning. So he goes out. Oh, I've got another cat. Hello, Mo. So it comes out from the beginning and he goes out to Brussels and he goes to see the reporter, his reporter mate, and not mate, actually they're not friends at all, but he goes to see him and he watches a, a news conference and then he goes, oh, should we go for a beer at lunchtime? All going to be sloshed by two, but there's a lot of drinking in this. So they all have a, like a beer. So a couple of fellow journalists come up and rather than just going oh right you know hello I've just come from Edinburgh and yeah and they were perfectly pleasant to him I mean and he was just horrible just so rude and it was kind of written as though you could kind of understand it you know he's a maverick maverick journalist who is on the edge and he's you know he doesn't he doesn't take nothing from nobody because he's he's Neil Bannerman and he's like no He's, he's just been rude and arrogant and just not very nice at all in any way, shape or form. And there's no redemptive arc. He starts being like that. He finishes being like that. He's tortured. No, he's not. He's rude. That's what he is. He's not to a tortured soul. He's rude, quite frankly. And I would tell him that. 
Um, he wouldn't like me. See, I told you, both cats are gone now. They're like, doors open. We can go in and out. Got doors closed. Mom, let me in. Let me out. Anyway. Um, I lost my train of thought now. So, yeah. So, and there's a the description of it. The Peter May loves his main character, Neil Bannerman. He's stocky but powerfully built and, and like this. And everybody is captivated by his eyes, which show that he's lived... And then I thought, oh, really? Let's have a look at the picture of Peter. Hmm, stocky, one could say. I suppose maybe powerfully built. I thought this is such a author's projection of what they would, they imagine people think about them or imagine people say about them. I mean, they're just it just read like that. I remember reading the first couple of Patricia D. Cornwall, as she was then. She wasn't Patricia Cornwall, she was Patricia D. Cornwall to begin with. And I first read that and I thought, God, she really loves his character, Kay Scarpetta. I mean, she really loves her. And, um, you know, her eyes and her steely, her steely blue eyes and her blonde hair and, you know, how she's built and everything. I thought, she really, the author really is keen on her. And then I saw a picture of Patricia D. Cornwall and I was like, ah. Ah, I see. This is how you imagine everybody. This is your alter ego. And this is your projection of yourself onto the world. And so this book, and this is kind of tough. And he's, he's as he's a maverick. And uh, no, he's just rude and unpleasant. And I didn't enjoy it at all. I really, really didn't enjoy it. Um, I read it. And it's not often I, if I'm not enjoying a book, that I actually continue with it. I can't help oh, just going, well, enough. I'm not going to spend time with it, but I did kind of slightly rage. I was kind of interested enough to know what happened at the end, but the end was wrapped up terribly. Um, not happy <laughs> with it. And I was like so looking forward to a good spy thriller. Now, if you want a good spy thriller, this isn't it. As far as I'm concerned, it's not for me. If you've read it and you enjoyed it, no worries. Um, that's good, but it, everybody has different tastes. And I just because I didn't enjoy it doesn't mean I don't think anybody else should enjoy it although it's rubbish, um, uh, read and you don't, you know, and you want to read something that's not current, so it's not all technology, this, that and the other. If you want to read a good, good, solid spy thriller that I can remember the first time I read it, I was blown away with how good it was. And that was written in the 1950s and that's The Day of the Jackal by Frederick Forsyth. I can't find my copy of it, otherwise I'd show you it. And honestly... It's such a good book. I mean, it is a classic for a reason. And I don't know whether anybody would actually call it classic. I think it is for that genre, for spy thriller, for... Oh, it's just so beautifully plotted. It's plotted with such precision and understanding and the sense of place and the characters and as a character study of the jackal, as in the day of the jackal, of, of the of the assassin it's just brilliant i mean it is a period piece and so the fact that there are sexual politics in it they make you like twitch a bit but it's perfect for what it is i mean it is just such a good book now and i might have to reread it just for the I, I have really read it quite a few times it's not something that i just read once and never picked up again and the film's brilliant anyway you may have heard of the film, The Day of Jackal, never realised the source material is still there. And it's still just such a good book. Um, and that's what I mean about I'm capable of reading something that has dodgy politics in it. What well, I consider dodgy politics in it. They are. Um, and able to just go, eh, that's of the time. That's what it was. Bond. Hello. Um, but I really, I mean, so this, and I find it even more, is that he Peter, re Peter read it and went, yeah, <laughs> Still great. No. No, Peter. No. So anyway. So after that, I just thought, mm, I'll just go for a romance. So I've started to read. This is what I'm currently reading. I'm reading Mind to Possess, a side-changing novel by Nalini Singh. I know what I'm getting with this. I'm getting a paranormal romance in the side-changing series, which is slightly alternative now. Um... And it is gothic, romantic, action-packed, funny, sexy. So I just thought, I know what I'm getting. I'm going to read this as a palate cleanser and I will feel better and I'll be able to go on for something else. So that's what I've got on the old, the old eyes. And for my ears, 
I am still continuing with Jane Austen. I do this every every couple of years. I mean, I must read. Excuse me, I'm going to burp. That's because I got annoyed. <laughs> I drank my coffee in an annoyed fashion. <laughs> drank some air with it. Um, every year or couple of years, I go through my Jane Austens because I just love them. And I don't think I've actually listened to Sense and Sensibility or read Sense and Sensibility either for about two, three years. And that's overdue. I watched the film recently and I might watch it again after I've, I've read this. Um, with Emma Thompson and Kate Winslet and Greg Wise and Hugh, Hugh, what's his face? Not Hugh Laurie, Hugh Grant, that's the blood chap. And Colonel Brandon, Alan Rickman. Yes, yeah, such a good film. Anyway, this is the book, Sense and Sensibility, Jane Austen. This is my beautiful cloth bound edition from Penguin Classics. And I'm on chapter nine, which is when Marianne goes out for a walk uh, with Margaret. And then she falls down and she's rescued. It's so good. It's so good. So it's, I haven't realised quite how much bigger it is than Persuasion. So that's quite quite a big, a big difference for that. But it's such a good one. It isn't my favourite Jane Austen, but it is lovely. And as I'm getting older, I'm seeing more and more into it. So I used to really love it and I'm, I'm getting more into it. So there we go. I've ranted. I have ranted too much. I have ranted too long. This is going to be a long Friday Reads because of the... Um, read so i hope it's not too long for you if it is oh well it'll be shorter next week i promise you and uh yes there we go so i hope you've had a good week i hope you've had a a, a fine week a couple of weeks and uh, we're back to the routine now and i look forward to speaking to you again next week in the next couple of days i will be putting up a book haul so you will be able to um have a little bit of that and you'll see my my other new books that i've got in the last couple of weeks so, uh, yes, so this has been lovely, but Jim, I shall now ask the husband to play us out. Friday reads, Friday reads, it's Friday reads, I'm gonna read a book. Oh, yeah. Friday reads, Friday reads, it's Friday reads, I'm gonna read a book. Friday, 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 Friday,